Hey, it's your girl Ashley. I be ballin' with the I B B I B ballin' basketball show. You already know. Yo, I'm about to recap the WNBA semifinals and recap the lit. It's gonna be lit. The WNBA finals is gonna be lit. So I'm gonna preview that. So I just watched Game Five, you know, versus Sun versus the Link and Minnesota Link. They came out just clicking on all cylinders and I was like man this not even gonna be a game and even though the sun the sun tried tried they tried they tried they really tried to come back but every time the link would just come back at them like bow 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 and the sun just fell down like oh. they could they didn't have enough you know Collier actually made history she's the first player ever to have 25 points plus 10 rebounds plus in three playoff games. The first ever in consecutive playoff games. Three. And tonight she scored 27 points, 11 rebounds. Courtney Williams, man, she was dropping dimes. She was, you know, hitting the teammates at the right spots. Like Kayla McBride, she had 19 points. She was shooting swish swish. And you could tell the sun was off because they left. Her wide open. She's like one of the best three point shooters. And, you know, sometimes she was just wide open. Courtney Williams, you know, she was going to show out, especially in front of her dad. She had 24 points. Um, with the son, you know, Carrington trying to do her thing with 17 points, 12 rebounds, you know. Dewana Bonner, she had like 14 points. Jones, you know, she was doing her thing in the paint. But it seemed like, oh, they had 19 turnovers, the Sun. And it seemed like they tried to, like, do things in traffic and, like, throw passes in traffic. And, you know, the Minnesota's defense, Reeves' defense, it, it, it's top notch in certain things you're not going to get away with. And even though the Sun is, defensively is great, I think they're lacking, like, that three-point punch that, the Lynx had, and they also missing that, you know, offensive punch, you know, oh, Marina, she, uh, you know, had an injury, but she did come back, but, you know, they thought that was gonna give them, get them over the hump, because, man, they, they've been to the semifinals, they've lost, like, four times in six years, and, you know, they lost in the, uh, WNBA finals for like two times so it's like they can't get over the hump and they got um, a lot of free agents you know DC you know Bonner Alyssa Thomas you know Brianna Jones that's their core four right there so they're not gonna look the same you know somebody probably not gonna be back but this is all like it was like even kill series right you know punch you know come back at him, you know, because the son actually delivered the first punch. Alyssa Thomas almost had like a, you know, triple-double. Their defense was swarming. And the link can, you know, in game one, they couldn't hit a shot. But the son could. And like, even in game four, they had a lot of contribution. Ty Harris got in the starting lineup and had 20 points and right you know was swishing swish 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 you know multiple people with um double figures and uh marina she exploded with like six threes in game one but link if you notice link you know in game two and game three swarming defense just swarming defense man and the fissa collier you know she's the mvp but she has so many shooters around, so many shooters around, and they, in the regular season, they shot like 38% from three, and, you know, they, if you even a step off, if you late, and that's what was happening a lot of times, they was late, late rotations of getting the shooters, and, you know, that 
pick and roll with Courtney Williams and the Fisher Collier. They late on that. Um, and so I was like, man, I think this came down to, because they both the best defensive teams. I think this came down to, like, I feel like offense. It, it Because, like, who had the best offensive team? I feel like Lynx had the best offense, right? Because Carrington, you know, she can score, but she's not like a three-point shooter. Even Alyssa Thomas isn't. And it's like they weren't go- getting in the paint that much. I know they have Hines. I know they have Collier. I know they have Elena Smith. That's going to make it hard to get into the paint. But they should have got into the paint more with Alyssa Thomas, right? She's like a... Giannis dominating the paint shack, you know, and and Brianna Jones, you know, she they should have got in the paint more, but they didn't, and I think that defense, that defense by the links helped. And the thing is, they don't really have many weaknesses. They don't really have many weaknesses on defensively. And Reeves, they they got like. They, their ball movement is insane. They don't have a weakness offensively either. So it's like you can't really make mistakes. You can't make mistakes because they're going to make you pay. They're going to make you pay. Also, um, Collier is the first link, you know, to have consecutive 20 point in 10 rebound games. So that's some more history for you, for Collier. I just feel like I I do know that the Suns bench outscored them in Game Three, but to no avail, you know, <laughs> to no avail. Um, but yeah, like if you notice, Game Four, everybody was in double figures for the Suns, and if they don't have everybody in double figures. They're not going to win against, you know, the Lynx defense plus the Lynx. The Lynx. Kayla McBride is one of the best three-point shooters. You can't leave her open. And I just feel like Courtney Williams is, like, a really great mid-range creator. The physicality I mean, the footwork, the up-and-unders, you know, the pivots, you know, the fadeaways. It's going to be very hard. It's going to be hard. Lena Smith shooting that thing defensively. You know, also, uh, Bridget Carrington. I forgot to mention her. Another Swiss Army knife that gets in it to defensively can hit the three. And it's going to be hard. It's going to be hard. And even if you double-team Collier, you know... She can just kick it out to shooters. So, it's going to be very, very tough for the Liberty. But, speaking of the Liberty, let's get into the Aces versus Liberty. That was a star-studded event. I wish it went to Game 5, like, you know, this previous series with Suns and Link. But, it is what it is. But overall, I think the Liberty have shown, like, okay, we lost last year in the NBA Finals. It stung. They kept the receipts about how they wasn't really a team with togetherness. You know, if you notice, their chemistry, their defense, their togetherness, their, their, their grit, you know, that vengeance to get revenge and to redeem themselves is firing in their veins to finally bring New York a championship that is what they want you know you know um Knicks they're gonna be good this year but right now in the summer it's all liberty it's all liberty you know Spike Lee coming to the games it's gonna be lit that it be lit (laughs) like Sabrina said you know, New York was injected in my veins when Spike Lee and I, you know, hand clapped. But if you notice, 
Aces have been struggling all year up and down. And sometimes they could flip the switch. Sometimes they couldn't. But it's going to be hard to flip the switch against the Liberty. You know what I mean? And I feel like the Liberty's length and their defense was top-notch. And the Aces, they were always a step behind. They were slow. The switches were bad. I mean, it was a layup line, like Becky Hammond said, you know. Uh, they struggled with the pace, they struggled in transition, you know, and, you know, Jones was doing her thing, getting double-doubles, Sabrina, nah, 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 Sabrina, Sabrina is on another level, and I'm gonna tell you why, because last year in the WMA finals, she struggled big time, and, you know, my friend called her out, was like, it was like, where's your mama mentality? But she got that mama mentality this year. She worked on her game. She got those floaters. The handles improved. Passing improved. Shooting has improved. You know, she can light it up. Light it up, light it up. Um, you know, she scored like, in, you know, 20 plus points multiple times. The only game she didn't was... um. Game three, when they held her to, like, four points. But other than that, she just came out swinging. Swish, swish, logo threes. It, it didn't matter. And when they started the 6-4, you know, Liani, I think that's how you pronounce her name. She's the rookie from Germany, won MVPs and championships overseas, and they made a great trade of getting her. Um, from the sky. Um, why they let her go, I don't know. But the length, the, the shooting, right? And, you know, the size. Putting her in the starting lineup was great. And their depth, their depth is very key. They're, they were definitely, they had more depth. They had more versatility than the aces, right? Um, the paint points. Right, um, the point, the second chance points, they were like dominant everywhere, and they were feasting on aces. Obviously, you know, Asia Wilson, she's the MVP, unanimous MVP. She's gonna bring it every time, and she was bringing it from start to finish, from the beginning of the season to the playoffs. But her team didn't seem to have that consistency, that hunger that she had. Um, and that, I mean, they showed, they lost, um, they got down, um, 0-2, to two, and no team has ever come back, um, for being down 2-0, I mean, 0-2, and in a five-game series, right? So, winning three straight was, was gonna be very, very hard, especially against the Liberty, it's not, you know... <laughs> You know, um, and I think the record is like 18 and 0. So now it's like 19 and 0. You know, no team has ever done it. I thought they could at least win both games at home to push it to game five, but that just shows the maturity and what the Liberty have learned. Like, they could have just easily said, We're gonna win in New York. In game five, they were like, nah, anything can happen in game five, right? So, let's get this over with. They had their game, blah, blah, blah. But let's adapt. Let's look at the film. And then, yo. Sabrina and Nescu, she just went swish, 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 swish. You know, like Steph Curry out there, you know. Um, I feel like. Vander Sloot coming off the bench is good. You know, you still got a champion uh, passing net. The fact that you have Vander Sloot coming off your bench, even though she hasn't been confident in the three, you know, she hit the threes and passed the ball. So, I mean, it's just going to be uh, crazy. And Brianna Stewart, you know, she's been balling. She, you know, heard the comments of two seven out of 17, you know, <laughs> and she's a great facilitator. And she's, uh, you know, she's a big that can stretch the floor, obviously, and can, you know, um, got the post moves. She, 
there's really nothing she can't do defensively she brings it and but using her as a facilitator that's a great move that's a great move um and i feel like the liberty created a lot of turnovers and that hurt the aces as well because when you turn over the ball you get the team going in transition easy shots easy shots and i feel like um the game that the one game that the aces won you know chelsea gray was doing her little point god thing you know you no know, her big point god thing you know and jackie young 20 points you know Kelsey Plum, you know, did her thing. Um, she had like 20 points, but yeah. I Oh, Tiffany Hayes coming off the bench as well. Sixth woman of the year. She was contributing. But overall, Liberty um, had a better defense, better offense, had a had this more depth, more versatility. When you can have Brianna Stewart be your point, center or point forward you know when you when you have Sabrina and that's lighting it up you have and even if like their big three doesn't perform that well you still have depth you have Bellini I mean Bellini you know Hamilton you know, who is actually is like a Swiss Army life, similar to Jackie Young, doesn't get enough credit, but defensively brings it, can, you know, get her on offense and shoot the three, you know, they have that depth, and I think, so even if, like, you stop, because this is the thing about the Liberty, they are a super team, Jonquil Jones with the Sun, she was an MVP, right? Brianna Stewart, MVP with Storm and Liberty. Sabrina Nescu, number one pick, right? She hasn't won an MVP, right? She hasn't won an MVP, but she pl- she's playing like an MVP. So it's inevitable that she's going to win an MVP. So you got you're up against three MVPs. So, if Asia Wilson's teammates don't bring it, if even one has a bad game, like, you don't have a bench. You have only Tiffany Hayes coming off the bench. That's not going to get it done. You're going to need, you know, uh, they needed a big that, you know, could, you know, help Asia Wilson in the paint. Kia Stokes is good, but you know, she's kind of limited, right? You know, defensively, she's not limited, but offensively, she is. You're going to need at least... This is how I feel about a bench. If you have a good guard, a good wing, and a good big coming off the bench, you're set. That's three. That's like five... I mean, that's eight rotation players, right? So, if you have Chelsea Gray, Kelsey Plum, Jackie Young, Asia you know, all contributing, plus bench players contributing, then you're set. But they were missing, I feel like, that big in that wing. They had the guard off the bench with Tiffany Hayes, but they didn't have a bench. And if your starters, if your starting guards don't bring it, then it's not gonna do good. And I feel like they are similar with their threes, like 35, 34% threes, they're, you know, obviously, you know, the Aces won last year, but let me, when you combine the numbers with Tiffany Hayes, um, Plum, Young, Gray, their field goal percentage and their three-point percentage, this is what it was, let me see, um, it was... 28% from the field and 23% from the three. That's all those guards. That's not going to get it done. Like, sure, they had one good game, but that that could have been a fluke, we know. 
and, and you need consistency. I mean, that is the best thing about players. You need consistency because if you're not consistent, then you're going to just drop a tier. You know, there's top tier, middle, low, you know what I mean? They, could, could, could they have been tired and been in all these commercials like Becky Hammond say maybe they're not motivated or hungry or maybe they weren't on the same page they were just up and down both, both ends of the floor and you gotta give Liberty their credit for coming back and really just clicking just they, they haven't missed a beat they haven't missed a beat man let me see um are there any other good things okay so this is the Liberty sixth time in the WNBA Finals. Um, yeah, in their second straight. And so let me talk about the Liberty. I'm going to give you my predictions, right? Liberty versus Link. This is great. This is like the super team versus the underdog. Um, And I feel like there were, oh yeah, the Liberty won one game against them in the um, regular season. Then, um, yeah, the Link won three. Sometimes you can't go really by, like, who won which game in the, you know, regular season. Because the playoffs is just a different animal, right? Especially the WNBA Finals. Everybody's watching that, right? People may not watch... It's, it's similar to like the NBA where sometimes people only watch like the finals because they know it's about to be over like and it's on ABC you know it's everybody don't got ESPN right but anyway this I feel like let me start with the X factors I think Liani 6'4 rookie who you know congratulations on making rookie first team she she's going to be an X factor because she's shooting crazy percentage she's shooting 64% from the field and 59% from 3 right and scoring in double figures in the playoffs and it's like she's on fire and she can bring it defensively right smart capable defender all that and I feel like the link, the links, um, X Factor is going to be Kayla McBride. You know, she had 19 points, right, um, in game five. If you can get her open for all these threes, and she got a floater. A floater is nice. It's nice and pretty. It's nice and pretty. And it, it's not that short little floater. Like, some, some people got, like, a short little floater. Her floater, it looked like she can shoot that floater from the free throw line. Um, so, I feel like those two are, like, the X factors. Like, if you, because you, I feel like they're going to get things out of Collier and Courtney. But, like, if you can get something out of, you know, Kayla McBride every game. And, of course, you know, Lena, you know, Lena Smith, you know, um, Bridget, you know, those are great players, too, that can heat it up, too. But I just feel like Kelly McBride, yo, yeah. top 15, top 10, three-point shooter. And I just went over, you know, Liani is like, she's, she's hot, she's sizzling, she's on fire. So I feel like those are the X factors. But I feel like John Quell Jones is going to be big in the series. Well, she needs to be big in the series. Because I feel like, you know, sometimes when you're playing with other great players like MVPs, right? Brianna Stewart, you know, Sabrina, you feel like maybe you don't have to. She don't, she don't have to score 20 every night. But I feel like. How is she going to handle with all their bigs, right? You got Hines, you know, you have Collier, you have Smith. How are you going to deal with all those uh, size in the paint, you know? Because the Aces didn't really have size, you know? 
they were missing that big off the bench, like I was telling you before. How is she gonna deal with that? And if she can, you know, you know, get, get double doubles, that's gonna be good. Um, I feel like it's gonna be a a, a great show with Stewie versus Collier, because I feel like they can do like multiple things. They can pass it, you know. They can shoot it for mid range, you know, threes, you know, post moves, hook shots. Right, they can rebound, they can do a lot, so it's like, it's like they're like going to be even, and I feel like, you know, Courtney Williams, she don't really get enough credit for her defense, I don't know if anyone can stop Sabrina, like, I feel like maybe the, so the Aces stopped Sabrina for one game, then she came back sizzling, right? So, if you can stop Sabrina, who, look, there was a game where she scored or assisted 19 points, like, in the fourth quarter. Like, in the fourth quarter, she's, like, bringing it, man. She's bringing it in the fourth quarter. So, you guys are going to really have to lock down on her in the fourth quarter. Um, But... I don't know if anyone can stop her. And if Sabrina goes off, Courtney Williams definitely got to match that energy. If Courtney Williams has a bad game and Sabrina didn't, you ain't matching that energy. So it's going to it's gonna have to be Courtney Williams versus Sabrina who can bring it and which team. Because I feel like Link it thinks they're a better defensive team, right? They're going to be the best defensive team the Liberty has faced. So it's like, how how are they going to deal with that? And I think, um, you know, Liberty are going to be the best offensive team that the, you know, that Minnesota has ever faced in the playoffs um, this year. And so it's like, who's going to bring it every game? And all it takes is, you know, I feel like this is going to get go into game five for sure, for sure. I, I wouldn't want it any other way. I thought this game five that I saw tonight against Suns versus um, Lynx was going to like go down to the wire. I would love for it to be a game five coming down to the wire. I feel like Minnesota has that history of winning chips, championships with Reeves, right? The Liberty are trying to get their first one. Meanwhile, you know, the, you know, the Minnesota, they're trying to continue that history of winning. So, if I had to really place a bet, I would bet that the Liberty are going to win in game five. It would be crazy if they go down to the wire, Sabrina hits a clutch shot, <laughs> you know, and then high five Spike Lee that'd be perfect for um, New York, but I I don't really care who wins personally because I feel like I just want a great WNBA Finals, everybody healthy um, everybody playing their best A game because you know, my team I, I'm more of a player lover, I'm not really a team lover like that, Candace Parker things might have been different if Ken Sparkle was healthy and played another year with the Aces, you know, right? My favorite player, Ken Sparker, but yeah, I feel like Aces, I mean, Liberty are going to win in game five, and it's really, it's really going to be tough, but I feel like John Cook Jones is going to be big, Liani is going to be big, I feel like the Liberty, they're just, I feel like the super team is going to trump the underdogs in this one. And I feel like Liberty, they're like, this is our, this is what we came for. This is why Jones and Stewie came here. This is why they came here. It's going to be tough. It's, it's definitely going to be tough. Who's going to be resilient? Who's going to persevere? Who's going to have those bounce back games? 
who's gonna commun- communicate in just the best. We gonna see, we gonna see. I just know it's gonna be litty, it's gonna be great, and I wanna say thank you guys for tuning in. You know, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and tell me who you think is going to win the WNBA Finals. Peace, and remember to stay ballin'. Swish.